All right, they want us to factor, classic factoring problem. So remember what factoring, another word for factoring is like divide or break up. I like to go back to the basic example. If I said, tell me what the factors of 14 are, what does that mean? What are the factors of 14? Like things that will equal it. Mm -hmm, things that multiply together to equal it, so 2 and 7. So the factors are 2 and 7, right? And also 1 and 14, but those are the factors. So what are the factors of this expression? Well, what are the things that multiply together to make that expression? And if you remember the pattern that you see whenever you see a, a, a quadratic trinomial, quadratic, because it's a, the highest degree is two, trinomial because there's three, you know that, that if it factors, a lot of times it factors like this, mm -hmm. right? And you remember what this is right here, what those two things, where those two things come from? No, it comes from the first. So it comes from your first, it comes from your first um, term in that trinomial. So how can I break up x squared? Um, what are factors of x squared? X and x. X and x, right? And you remember where these last come from? Remember where these come from? Um, what equal to get that? Yeah, we'll multiply together to get the nine which are either 3 and 3, negative 3 and negative 3, 9 and 1, or negative 9 and negative 1. So which of those do you think would work? Because remember, then what I have to do is multiply the outside and the inside, and that needs to add up to the middle term. So which of those factors, 3 and 3, negative 3 and negative 3, 9 and 1, or negative 9 and negative 1, which ones? Which ones add up to negative 10? 9 and 1. Not positive 9 and 1. Oh, negative 9. Negative, negative 9 and negative <laughs> 1. Now let's check it. Let's check if that's right. Let's foil it back out just to check, because remember, you can always check your answers. What's x times x? x to the x squared. Good. What's x times negative 1? Negative x. Negative x. What's nine, negative 9 times x? Negative 9x. And what's negative 9 times negative 1? 9. Positive 9. What do these two add up to? Negative 10x. Negative 10x. There it is. So that's your answer. Got it? Next one's a little bit trickier. Because now we got terms in front here, or factors in front, but remember always to take out a greatest common factor. So can you see what they have in common for sure? You can definitely take a 5 out, yeah. right? Can't take a 10 out. I think a 5 is all we can take out. So if I take a 5 out of all of these, what's going to be left? What's 80 divided by 5? Well, 80 or 5 goes into 50 10 times, <coughs> and then there's 30 left over. How many times does 5 go into 30? 6. Good, so 16. That's how you do it in your head. How many times does 5 go into 120? Mm. Well, 10 goes into 120 12 times. So 5 goes into 120 24 <laughs> times. Good. <coughs> and then how many times is 5 going to 45? Nine. Nine times. All right. So this tells, this is good because what I see now is, wait a minute, this is a pattern that I recognize. 16 is a perfect square and so is 9, right? Mm -hmm. And the square root of 16, y squared, is 4y. The square root of 9 is 3. If I multiply 4 times 3, I get 12. And if I double that, I get 24. So this is one of those things that it's a pattern that you should know. You should have these kind of memorized. So this is going to factor into 4y minus, I did a minus because of that negative there, 4y minus 3 times 4y minus 3. And let's just make sure that that actually worked. 4y times 4y is 16y squared. 4y times negative 3 is negative 12y. Negative 3 times 4y is another negative 12y. That's why I got the negative 24, right? And negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. 
that checks out for us. So that worked. Now how can I rewrite this? How can I write this in a different way? What's a simpler way to write this? Five times four um, y minus three two squared. squared, exactly. And that's the way you'll see it if it's on your answer key on a final exam or an ACT or SAT. Got it? So that's factoring, and remember all factoring is is just dividing it out. It's just dividing this expression can be written in this way instead of in this way. Now why might you want to do that? Well, this is a, this writing something in this manner, it makes it a lot easier to solve if you're trying to solve this equation. If this was actually, if this said, said it was equal to zero, for instance, now I could solve that very easily, right? by just saying, oh, then y has to equal 3 fourths. I'm done. Whereas if I look at this equation up here, the top one, I can't tell very easily that y equals 3 fourths. Or I can't solve it very quickly without factoring it first. Same with this one up here. Why would I want to factor that? <coughs> well, because if this equals 0, if you had this in an equation, that equals 0, this is hard to solve. It's hard to find the values of x that make that equation true. But here, I can see right away, oh, if I make x equal 9, then I'll get 0 times 8, which is still 0. So that would work. And if I make x equal to 1, I'll get 0 times negative 8, which is still 0. And that works. So your two solutions are 9 and 1. A lot easier to solve this equation when it's factored than to solve this equation where it's not factored. So that's why you factor. Factoring makes your equation or your expression easier to manage or easier to deal with in terms of trying to find solutions or also trying to find uh, x-intercepts on a graph, which you'll see how those are related to each other later.